LSTMs, or Long Short-Term Memory Networks, have been around for a long time. They have been applied for quite a few sequence-related tasks, such as text generation, translation, or even image captioning. Now, their drawback has been that they couldn't be parallelized, and so they couldn't be used for along with powerful GPUs. And the limitations of LSTMs paved the way for the emergence of transformers that leverage the powerful GPUs for massive parallelization of training and inference. What if we now go back to LSTMs, make them parallel, and see how they compare with transformers? Or in other words, what performance can we achieve in language models when overcoming these limitations and scaling the LSTMs to the size of current large language models? This exact question is answered by the current paper titled XLSTM or Extended Long Short Term Memory. They do so by proposing two novel blocks in their architecture, namely SLSTM and the next one is MLSTM. Stacking these two blocks together leads to the emergence of XLSTM. So in this video, we're going to dive deeper into how these blocks are formed and how the LSTM is being built. One of the earliest networks designed to tackle sequential data is the recurrent neural networks. It uses recurrent connections in its architecture with X as the input and O at the output. If we unfold it, we can visualize it as a sequence of operations happening at timestamp t minus 1, t and t plus 1, so on and so forth. A major drawback was that of vanishing gradient problem, where the gradients get to zero as we stack too many blocks of RNNs together. So LSTMs, or long short-term memory networks, were proposed to overcome the vanishing gradient problem by introducing cell states and gating mechanism into the network. The cell states, C, are long-term memories that live across several time steps. And the hidden states, H, are short-term memories that are passed along from one time step to another. And of course, we have the input Z from the input sequence. Now, there are three gates, which are S-shaped functions. The forget gate uses a sigmoid function to decide what information to forget in the long-term memory. The input gate also uses a sigmoid function to process the input and finally adds it to the output of the forget gate. Now, this addition operation has got a fancy term called constant error carousal in the XLSTM paper and in the academic literature. This addition operation is what tackles the vanishing gradient problem. Now the outputs CFT is then passed to the output gate, which usually is a tan H function leading to the hidden state output H of T that's passed on as input to the next time step. So with these operations, we have just dissected the two main equations of LSTMs, which are C of T and H of T. One of the main drawbacks that's highlighted in the paper that comes with LSTMs is its inability to revise storage decisions. So what does that mean? So to understand what it means, let's have a look at two example sentences. The first one being, Tom went to the shop, he bought some drinks. And the next sentence is pretty long with Tom went to the shop to buy some groceries which included carrots, onions, bananas, blah, blah, blah. He also bought some drinks. If you provide this context to the model and ask the question, who bought some drinks? It's quite easy in the first sentence. But in case of the second sentence, Tom came quite behind and the model has seen so many words like carrots, onions, bananas before it actually saw he, which refers to Tom. In this case, the model has to make constant decision as to actually it needs to forget Tom in the long-term memory or should it actually keep Tom in the long-term memory. Now, this is quite a big challenge for an LSTM model. And so the problem lies with the sigmoid function that's there in the forget gates. And so this paper proposes a change to that sigmoid function. Let's take a plot of the sigmoid function shown by this blue curve. It's a nice S-shaped curve that goes from 0 to 1 in the y-axis. So whatever the input that we get in the x-axis, 
is squashed between these values 0 to 1. So if we get a value somewhere to the right side of the x-axis, a pretty high value for x, then we can see that in the y, we get a pretty small window very close to 1, which means it's quite hard to decide between the value for y as the x value increases. But if we substitute this sigmoid function with this exponential function, which is shown in the green color, then we can see that for any high value of x, the window of the value for y is quite large. And we can see that there's a this much more wider range for the y values that we can get. That's the reason that exponential could be a better choice for the uh, activation function compared to the sigmoid. So let's have a look at how the equations of the LSTM are modified in order to accommodate this exponential curve. So the solution proposed in this paper is the SLSTM blocks. If we go back to the classic LSTM equations that represent the cell states, as we saw before, it's a function of the forget gate and the input gates. Now these gates in turn are composed of sigmoid functions. So now if we want to replace the sigmoid functions with exponential functions, we just have to plug in the exponent in place of the sigmoid. So the new gates f of t and i of t now become exponent of f of t and exponent of i of t. And that pretty much is the main modification to create the SLSTM block. Now, unlike the sigmoid function, which squeezes the values between a fixed range of say 0 and 1 at the output, the exponential function has a natural tendency to kind of blow up. As we can see, it just keeps increasing as the input increases. Now, the second problem with the exponential function is also that it doesn't normalize the values to lie between 0 and 1. So in order to address these two problems of normalization and instability due to blowing up the values, we need to modify the equations of the LSTM further. So we introduce new normalizer states, which is a function of the forget gate and the input gates. We can think of it as a running average of the normalization values. And we use the calculated normalization values to normalize the output hidden state h of t. While the normalization takes care of the hidden states, in order to control the exponential from blowing up the forget gates and the input gates, we need to introduce stabilizers. So the stabilizer is the max of the log of the f of t and the log of the i of t values, we are basically pretty much countering the effect of exponential using a logarithmic functions. And we subtract these stabilizer values from the input and forget gate to stabilize them. So that pretty much summarizes the modifications to arrive at the SLSTM blocks. The next building block of XLSTM is the MLSTM blocks where m stands for memory. Let's go back to the classic LSTM equation again to see what the drawback of it is. Now we can see that the cell state C of t is a scalar, meaning we only deal with one number at a time when we have the luxury of modern day GPUs with at least 12 GB of memory these days. So the MLSTM block introduces matrices in place of scalars for the cell states. Now, going back to our classic equation of LSTM, what if we replace this scalar C of t with a matrix C of t with the capital C to indicate matrices and the cell states can be retrieved not just by gates I of t, but by storing key value pairs, which are vectors themselves. So the value of the cell state can be retrieved by queries, which are also vectors similar to the queries and key value pairs that are found in transformers. So to summarize the modified equations, the hidden state update also becomes a function of the query and is given by this equation, which now deals with matrices and vectors instead of scalars. With that information on MLSTM, let's dive into the detailed block structures. 
So let's start with SLSTM. So when it comes to SLSTMs, we use post up projections. The input first is passed through a causal convolution layers with swish activation functions. The output from these layers is then fed through a block diagonal linear layer with four diagonal blocks or heads and the output from these are then fed through the SLSTM block with four heads. The output is up projected using a gated MLP layer with GALU activation and down projected using gated MLP function. So moving on to the details of MLSTM block, we use pre up projections, meaning that the input is first up projected with a projection factor of two and one of the projections output goes to the MLSTM and the other one goes to the output gate directly and the input to the MLSTM blocks goes through causal convolution again with the Swiss function and the input to the MLSTM block goes through causal convolution and then goes through block diagonal projections, projection matrices of block size four, which output the query key and value that is readily used by the MLSTM blocks. Finally, we can stack the two type of blocks to form the XLSTM architecture. So the dark gray blocks represent the MLSTM blocks and the light gray blocks represent the SLSTM blocks and both are stacked together to form the XLSTM architecture. Now, in terms of the advantages, the paper mentions that the XLSTM networks have a linear computation complexity and a constant memory complexity with respect to the sequence length. In terms of evaluations, they trained on the Slim Pajama dataset to compare against other transformer based models like the LAMA and state space based models like MAMBA and they have used the notation of XLSTM A colon B meaning that you know we use a ratio of a particular number of MLSTM blocks against a particular number of SLSTM blocks for example when we say XLSTM 7 is to 1 it means that we've got a total of 8 blocks out of which seven are MLSTM based blocks and one is the SLSTM based block. And they report the output in terms of the accuracies. So they use the accuracy scaled between zero and one, where zero stands for random and one stands for perfect output. So these are the results they have reported to compare the different models. Something that is of particular interest is the parity task where the transformers or the state space model tend to struggle without memory mixing or the state tracking and where the XLSTM models come in very handy which are based on recurrent neural network architectures we can see that for this kind of parity task the XLSTM hits an accuracy as high as one the transformer based models which is LAMA uh, tends to struggle and also MAMBA, which is a state space based model, tends to struggle as well. But XLSTM performs comfortably in this particular kind of task. On top of these results, they have also done some ablation studies. So I'm not going to dive into the details of the ablation studies, but we can see the motivation to use the XLSTM architectures. So with that, I'm signing off and thanks you so much for your attention. And I will see you in my next. Until then. Bye.